Let's bring in atmospheric river expert Ryan Torn. He's from the University of Albany's Department of Atmospheric and Environmental Sciences. First of all, Ryan, how is this AR going to rank compared to what we saw in the January, February events? Yeah, so this, this event is really on par with a lot of the events that we saw in the December and January time period. It's We use a, a ranking scale of AR1 to AR5, a lot like the hurricane scale. And this particular event is running on the AR3 to AR4 scale, so a very potent system. What's different from those the December, January ones, though, is that the ground is very saturated. And we have lots of snow up at high elevation to melt. And so this one has the potential to have greater flooding than what we even saw during the December and January event. Let's talk a little bit about California's geography because it does not exactly hang out a welcome sign for the atmospheric river. When you get the topography, uh, this water runs into the mountains. And let's talk about those interactions because that's really what increases some of the vulnerability this late in winter. You got the snow there. Right, so uh, right now we've had almost near record snowpack going on in the Sierra. We've had a lot of low elevation snow over the last two to three weeks, um, a lot of cold systems there. And so um, there's a great potential for that for this very warm tropical AR system to just melt a lot of that snow and then put it into the river systems. Is it reasonable to think some of the high elevation snowpack could handle some of, you know, some of the water by absorbing it? I'm thinking about when you have a slushy in a cup and you add more liquid to it, sometimes it can absorb some of, of that water. Absolutely, Amy. Yeah. So the, the, the high elevation snowpack is going to be able to absorb this because there's a lot of capacity for it to absorb that water. But also, um, that snowpack is very cold as well. It's been very cold up in the mountains of the High Sierra. And so um, a lot uh, the rain that falls on it is not going to melt that snow very easily. And so I think we're less worried about the high elevation snow. It's more this leftover low elevation snow from the cold systems that have been there for the last two or three weeks. I'd like to talk a little bit about your studies there, University of Albany. Um, atmospheric rivers, they, they are huge events. And so what you guys have been able to do is sort of study and see where the storms are forming. And then part of the Scripps Institution is how you get the planes out and fly into the storms. Let's talk a little bit about how you guys prepare for that. And what are you looking for? What data comes back that you can use? Sure. Um, so I've been collaborating with the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes at Scripps. They collaborate with NOAA um, to do an observation campaign every winter um, trying to fill in some of the observation gaps that we have out in the Pacific Ocean. We have lots of satellites out there, and they can see various parts of the atmosphere, but um, we, we don't have a lot of data around atmospheric rivers itself, and those are very high-impact um, features. And so what we do is we use the... Well, I collaborate with them to use the planes that we normally use during the hurricane season um, to do observation collection during those events, and we take them out into the West Coast um, during the winter time. And so that's the Air Force um, planes and the NOAA um, high uh, altitude G4 plane. And so what we're doing is we're taking um, drop zones, which are like the weather balloons that you might see, but just with a parachute on them. And they're collecting wind data, temperature data, and humidity data. And then that can be incorporated into our numerical models that we then use to make our forecast. So we're trying to make forecasts better for these events so that people are more prepared on the West Coast. Yeah, fascinating, because once you know a little more about the storm and how much moisture it has, you can better prepare for those flash flooding instances in some of these communities which they're facing uh, today. We appreciate you taking the time. Always fascinating, and hopefully we can connect as time goes on. This is going to be a long-duration event, probably all the way through next week. Atmospheric River expert Ryan Torn from University of Albany's Department of Atmospheric and Environmental Sciences. Thanks for being on Fox Thank you. Weather. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.